श्रीमती कनीमोजी जी थैंक यू सर What is this, sir? Heckling? What is heckling? She's not. What is this? I haven't even started. Sir, what? I don't even yeah. understand. नहीं है ना पैसा ना पूरी आते हैं. I know. ये तो पूरी आम पैस रहा है. Sir, ये ये भाषा का मानसिकता है. Sir, what is this? She's not even started. Her member is heckling us. Speaker. This is a respect for women. Exactly, sir. What is this? I don't even understand what he says. What is the point of saying this? Sir, I stand here, and I'm happy to be speaking about the Women's Reservation Bill, and it is one of the very few bills I think most of us would agree on. And we thought this bill will be passed with all of us supporting each other and standing together. But unfortunately, the BJP has taken this also as an opportunity for politicking, and it is very unfortunate. I am just reminded of what Periyar said when I see the BJP uh, uh, speaking here and heckling us that the pretense of women, men that they respect women. and that they strive for their freedom is only a ruse to deceive them i'd like to quote the former chilean president michel bachelet a better democracy is a democracy where women do not only have the right to vote and to elect but to be elected In 1990, after the Montego Clemsford reforms were passed, we got the rights to vote, especially in the Madras Presidency and the Bombay Presidency. The Justice Party, Nidhi Kachi, passed a resolution on 10th May 1921 to grant voting rights for women for the first time in India. In 1927, Tamil Nadu elected its first women legislator in the country, Dr. Murthy Lakshmi Reddy, who was instrumental in abolishing the Devadasi system. But sir, nearly 100 years after that, we still have not passed the bill. <coughs> in 1929, Periyar, in the self-respect conference in Chengalpet, passed. a resolution insisting on reservations for women in education employment and politics the women's reservation bill was first brought with the support of the dmk during the united front government in 1996 september and then thiru deve gowda who was the prime uh, prime minister brought this bill and um, the law minister ramnath kalab was the one who presented the bill in this house then again our respected former prime minister vajpayee ji again brought this bill but it was the upa government in 2010 which passed it in the rajya sabha yes. and i got an opportunity to speak on the bill in the rajya sabha and that was 13 years ago <laughs> and i've got an opportunity to speak on this bill again here yes and we're still speaking about this bill and debating it for the past 13 only, years only yes. house stage only house stage house stage the women's reservation bill is a pole promise of the bjp yet many leaders had to urge them to bring this bill and to pass it our leader kalengar had written to the prime minister 
in 2014 to pass this bill. Madam Sonia Gandhi wrote to the Prime Minister in 2017 requesting him to pass this bill. Our Chief Minister M.K. Stalin wrote to the Prime Minister again in 2017 requesting and urging the government to pass the bill. He said, the bill which was moved to empower women's voice in the legislatures and parliament of our great nation is struggling to succeed. This is really disheartening. The DMK even conducted a rally in De Delhi from the Mandi House to the Jantar Mantar, and we had a march, and like-minded women leaders and uh, women's organizations participated in the rally. I myself have raised this issue uh, of bringing the reservation bill many times in Parliament, and to many of my starred and unstarred questions, the government's reply was very consistent. They said that they have to involve all stakeholders, political parties, and then build a consensus before bringing the bill. I'd like to know what consensus was built, what discussions were held. This bill was brought shrouded in secrecy. We did not know why this uh, uh, section, session was called for. Uh, in the all-party leaders' meeting, there was no mention of this bill. Uh, I don't know if any of the political party leaders were called for discussions no, and no, deliberations no, no, about bringing no, the bill. Not and uh, suddenly, the bill popped up from our computer screens like jack-in-the-box. <laughs> Is this going to be the way this government is going to function? Like, we've suddenly seen that there are lotuses blooming, springing from the uniforms of our secretariat staff. Yeah. Is everything going to be a yeah. surprise like this? In spite of all this, when the Prime Minister mentioned the Women's Reservation Bill, and when our own Meghwalji um, act, um, uh, introduced the bill, our minds were so full of happiness, and the lines of Mahakavi Bharati rang in my heart. Patangal alvadum, satangal seivadum, parinil pengal nadatta vandum, yetum arivinil anithinge pen, ilaipilip tan and rukumi adi. Which, if I translate, says that we have come to make laws and to rule. Now we are equals and let us cherish it. But then, like the crows and crows of my sisters who were waiting for this bill to be passed, my heart also sank when you said we had to wait for it and we don't know when actually the bill is going to be implemented. In 2010, when the bill was brought by the UPA government, there was no conditions. The bill was to take effect immediately after the passage of the bill. But the bill which was presented yesterday clearly says the reservation in Clause 5, it states the reservation of seats for women in the House of the People, the Legislative Assembly of the State, and the Legislative Assembly of the National Capital Territory of Delhi shall come into effect after an exercise of delimitation is undertaken for this purpose, after the relevant figures for the first census taken, after the commencement of the Constitution. I'd, our leader... Muttuvel Karunanadi Stalin, in his statement today, has said that India is the only country which has not conducted the decadal census. Yes. And if delimitation is going to be based on population census, it will deprive and reduce the representation of the South Indian states. Yes. It will become like a sword hanging on our heads. Yes. <laughs> he has said that we support the bill. But he's, uh, he asked this question. Why should the implementation be connected to the delimitation? Yes, why? And it is, he says it is a strange drama staged by the BJP, keeping in mind 
the 2029 elections, I mean 2024 elections. And we cannot ignore the representation for women from the backward classes either. He has emphasized that the doubts and the fear in the minds of the people of Tamil Nadu and the southern, South Indian states about our representation being reduced should be clarified and we, yes. there is a fear in the minds of the people that our voices will be undermined. There should be a clear clarification about this because we do not want our representation to be reduced in any way and uh, just because we, uh, you can you not give a reply saying we will not be uh, you know, underrepresented because the numbers will be the same and other states will get more representation. This, the, as it is, this has to continue so that we get uh, equal say in what is being discussed. So the 17th Lok Sabha has passed 40 bills on an average every year and without uh, hardly having opinions of women and without even hearing our voices in this house or the Rajya Sabha. And India ranks 141 out of 193 countries falling be in women's representation, falling behind our neighbors, neighbors like Pakistan, Bangladesh and Nepal. How long should we wait to see this bill being implemented? It can be easily be implemented in the coming elections, the parliamentary elections. This bill, you should understand, is not a reservation, but an act of removing bias and injustice. And if you do not remove the clause which says, after delimitation, then there is no point, because we do not know when this de inordinate delay can go on. You, you, you can do the... Uh, senses the delimitation after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, uh, the wait will continue going on. Because the 21 is not done. And I'd like, and of course, some of our leaders are very worried that if a woman becomes like a man, like if a man becomes like a woman, he gets the qualities of a woman, then he becomes God. But when a woman becomes strong, brave, then it is not something which is acceptable and she becomes a devil. You believe in God, you believe in Hinduism, and I'd like to ask, what is Kali? Isn't she brave? Yes. Isn't she strong? Yes. So who are you insulting? If this is an app. Why cannot women be strong? Why cannot women be brave? There are stories of, uh, haven't women participated in the independence struggle? Haven't uh, women uh, fought wars? Haven't you seen leaders, strong leaders like Mrs. Indira Gandhi in this country? It is this kind of words which actually put fear in our hearts and Yes, Jailalita was a strong leader. I, I accept, I have no uh, hesitation in well accepting that, she, that she's a very, very strong well leader. Done. Well done, Kani. Well done. Well done. Exactly. Well done, And Mayawati ji, Madam Sonia Gandhi. Yes. Mamta Banerjee. Mamta And... Uh, the one of the names you often forget is uh, uh, yes, um, Sushma Swaraj ji. And I also like to quote what I, li I like to quote what Sri Arun Jaitli ji said when uh, the discussion in Rajya Sabha happened. He said the argument that men can also ensure justice to women has been weakened. Underrepresentation and discrimination stare us in the face. Politics of tokenism must now evolve into <coughs> politics of ideas. So please stop this tokenism. And this bill is called Nari Shakti Vandan Bill. Stop saluting us. 
We do not want to be saluted. We do not want to be put on pedestals. We do not want to be worshipped. We do not want to be called mothers. We don't want to be your sisters, your wives. We want to be respected as equals. Let us get down from the pedestal and walk as equals. We have a right to this country as much as right you have. This country belongs to us. This parliament belongs to us. And we have a right to be here. Thank you. Dr. Kakuli Go 